Which is better for you, the Yumidigi power or the Moto G7 power? In this video, we're going to put these two powers head to head. Follow me on Instagram at KevinBreezeTV. Please join the Kevin Breeze tech community on Facebook to chat about budget smartphones, ask questions, and help others. Hi everyone, this is Kevin here, coming at you with my comparison video between the Yumidigi Power and the Moto G7 Power. Now many of you requested in my last video that I do a comparison between these two devices, and I always really appreciate getting those suggestions in the comments. It gives me a good idea of what you all are interested in seeing on the channel. So please keep up the suggestions. Now what's interesting is that even though there's about a $90 difference in the price of these two phones, with the Yumidigi Power being the cheaper of the two, many of the specifications are very similar, and in many situations the Yumidigi Power actually has better specifications. So that's pretty awesome. Now this version of the Yumidigi Power is the factory unlocked version of the phone, and it's available on Amazon for $139.99. Now it is GSM unlocked, and Yumidigi officially advertises this phone as working with GSM carriers, so in the US that includes AT&T, T-Mobile, Metro by T-Mobile, and Cricket. Now I have heard some reports of this phone working with Verizon. I'm gonna try that on my own a little bit later, but that might depend on where you live, and I do not think there are as many Verizon compatible bands here with this phone as you'll find with actual GSM carriers. Now this version of the Moto G7 Power is actually the Moto G7 Power with Alexa. So this phone is an Amazon exclusive, and it comes preloaded with a bunch of different Amazon goodies. So if you're a big fan of Amazon, then you're definitely going to like this phone. Now they do have another version on Amazon that is not the Alexa version, and doesn't feature the Amazon apps preloaded, but I personally got this one because I really do like Amazon services. Now this device was originally available for $249 when it was first launched, but currently, you can buy the factory unlocked version of the phone for $229, and you can buy the Alexa version for $249. And I'd imagine that moving forward, we're probably going to see even more price reductions with the Moto G7 Power. So definitely for these two devices, make sure to check out the links in the video description to see the most up-to-date pricing. Now one of the cool things about the Moto G7 Power with Alexa is that it actually officially works with all four major US carriers. So this device will work with AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, and Sprint, as well as Boost Mobile, Cricket, and Metro by T-Mobile. So pretty much every carrier in the United States will work with the Moto G7 Power with Alexa. So that's one nice bonus that this phone has over the Yumidigi Power. You're going to get better compatibility because this phone features more US bands. The Yumidigi Power features a 6.3 inch display coming in at 1080p with a 19.5 by 9 aspect ratio. And the Moto G7 Power has a 6.2 inch display coming in at 720p with a 19 by 9 aspect ratio. So the display on the Yumidigi Power is slightly larger and we're getting a 1080p display here versus a 720p display here. So that's clearly a really big difference. Now up top here you can see that on the Yumidigi Power we have a teardrop notch. And on the Moto G7 Power, we have a wider, more traditional notch. Personally, I prefer the notch style on the Yumidigi Power, just because it's a lot sleeker and smaller, and gives you more space for your notification icons. You can also see that the earpiece for the Yumidigi Power is up towards the top, above the camera, whereas the earpiece for the Moto G7 Power is right in the middle of the notch. Now size-wise, the Moto G7 Power is slightly taller, than the Yumidigi Power, and I think a big reason for that is because we do have a decently large size lip here on the bottom that does have the Motorola logo featured on it. Now it really comes down to your personal preference for which of these two designs you prefer, but I think for me personally, I like the design of the Yumidigi Power, mostly due to the smaller notch on the top. I just think it looks better. But let me know what you think. Which design do you prefer? The Yumidigi Power features a 16 megapixel front-facing camera, and with the Moto G7 Power, the front-facing camera is 8 megapixels. The Yumidigi Power features 64 gigabytes of internal storage, with the ability to expand that with a micro SD card, and the Moto G7 Power has 32 gigabytes of internal storage, so half the amount of storage as the Yumidigi Power. We also have micro SD card expansion with the Motorola. Now neither of these two devices feature wireless charging, but they both have fingerprint sensors on the back. So let's try those out right now. So it's super quick on the Yumidigi Power. 
and also very quick, if not maybe a little bit quicker on the Moto G7 power. Now the Yumidigi power has dual cameras on the back side with 16 and 5 megapixel cameras and the Moto G7 power just has one camera on the back. Now technically with both phones you do get portrait mode on the back side, so even though the Moto G7 power just has one camera on the back, it does have portrait mode, but I found the Yumidigi power to have a better portrait mode than the Moto G7 power. Now surprisingly, the Moto G7 power has 4K video recording, whereas the Yumidigi power just has 1080p at 30 frames per second video recording. So it's pretty wild and unexpected for a phone in this price range to be able to take 4K video. The Yumidigi power has 4 gigabytes of RAM, and the Moto G7 power has 3 gigabytes of RAM. So we get an extra gigabyte of RAM with the Yumidigi power. The Yumidigi power has the MediaTek Helio P35 processor, and the Moto G7 power has the Qualcomm Snapdragon 632 processor. Overall, I do prefer the processor with the Moto G7 power. However, I wouldn't be discouraged that the Yumidigi power has a MediaTek Helio P35 because it's actually not bad at all. The device does run nice and smoothly, and actually having 4GB of RAM really does help this out quite a bit. So performance wise, the Yumidigi power actually isn't that bad, but having the Snapdragon 632 on the Moto G7 power definitely makes it win in that category. Now let's move on to the battery. That is pretty much the reason why both of these phones have power in the name. Now the Yumidigi Power has a 5,150 mAh internal battery, and the Moto G7 Power has a 5,000 mAh internal battery. We do get fast charging with the Moto G7 Power, and with the Yumidigi Power we get standard charging. So the battery is slightly larger on the Yumidigi Power, which is cool to see. Now one feature that neither of these two devices have, which I think they should have, hence their name, is the ability to charge other devices through the USB-C cable, but they don't have that ability. It would be nice if you could almost use these as a power bank if you wanted to. Now software-wise, both devices do run Android 9 Pie, and you get a pretty stock experience with both phones, maybe a little bit more stock with the Yumidigi Power, but overall you get a great nice, clean Android experience with both phones, and it's great to see that they have the latest version of the software. Both OEMs here have been really good about providing updates, and in fact, right before making this video, I did get an update to the Yumidigi Power, which was a security update. So it's nice that the Yumidigi is nice and secure. Now that we've compared the specifications of these two phones, let's now compare the hardware. So I already kind of went over the front here, we have a little bit larger display with the Yumidigi Power at 6.3 inches versus 6.2 inches with the Moto G7 Power. We have 1080p here, we have 720p here. Overall, both phones have good displays, but you can't beat having 1080p with the Yumidigi Power. On the left side here, we have a similar configuration with both phones, just having the slot for the micro SD card and SIM card. On the right side, we have a similar configuration as well with the volume rocker and power button. On the top of the Yumidigi Power, we just have the noise canceling microphone. And on the top of the Moto G7 Power, we have the noise canceling microphone and we have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Now I do wish this headphone jack was located on the bottom of the device, but I suppose that I should just appreciate that we have one in the first place. Now taking a look at the bottom side of these two phones, on the Yumidigi Power, we have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, we have the microphone, we have the USB-C port for charging and data transfer, and we have the speaker. And on the Moto G7 Power, we have the microphone and we have the USB-C port, and I really can't find a speaker anywhere on here, so the audio pretty much travels out of the port itself. So I do like how the Yumidigi Power does have a dedicated speaker grill. And then taking a look at the back side here, we have some different materials. So on the Yumidigi Power, we have kind of this frosted polycarbonate material in gold. And the Moto G7 Power comes in this glossy blue plastic material. Both phones feel super solid. I feel like the Moto G7 Power though feels a little bit heavier and maybe just a little bit more premium. But overall, I do like the designs of both devices. Both devices have a fingerprint sensor on the back, as I mentioned before, but the location is super convenient, and I think both phones just have good designs overall. I do, though, really like this gold on the Yumidigi. I think it looks nice and sharp. Another thing I want to mention, too, is that the haptic feedback engine on the Moto G7 Power is super solid. It feels really crispy. It's kind of hard to describe, but it just feels really good. And it's a little bit mushy on the Yumidigi Power, but definitely not a deal break. I just really appreciate how the haptic feedback feels on the Moto G7 Power. Let's now do a speed test comparison between these two devices. Let's start the camera. One, two, three, go. Looks like it was a little bit faster on the Moto G7 Power. Let's start Google Chrome. One, two, three, go. It was faster on the Moto G7 Power as well. Let's go to Yahoo.com. One, two, three, go. Faster on the Moto G7 Power. Let's go to Engadget. One, two, three, go. 
Oh, wow, and that test was faster on the Umidigi power. Scrolling is smooth on both phones, so I really appreciate that. And really, overall, the Helio P35 processor on the Umidigi power is not bad at all. I am very impressed. Let's go to this article, one, two, three, go. And it looks like it was about the same for both phones. So which phone is better? Well, I think it definitely depends on your specific situation because these both have various pros and cons. I really like the display on the Umidigi Power. I really like the design as well. And I like how it has an extra gigabyte of RAM over the Moto G7 Power. So I think design-wise, I do like the design of the Umidigi Power better than I do the Moto G7 Power. However, I really like how the Moto G7 Power supports all four major US carriers and it has more bands internally, so you know you're gonna get the best carrier support possible with it. I also think the Qualcomm Snapdragon 632 is a better processor than the MediaTek Helio P35. However, you probably noticed in that comparison that the Umidigi didn't have a problem really keeping up. So if you want the most carrier flexibility, then you'll definitely have to go with the Moto G7 Power. But if you're looking for a sleeker designed phone, then you might want to go with the Umidigi Power. But you also can't forget that the Umidigi Power has 64 gigabytes of internal storage versus 32 with the Moto G7 Power. So there's a lot of pros and cons with both of these phones. It depends on what you find most important in a smartphone. So definitely let me know in the comment section below which of these two devices you prefer. And if you own one of the two, I'd love to hear about that as well. And if you've used Umidigi or Moto phones in the past, let me know about that too. But this is Kevin here. This is the Umidigi Power, this is the Moto G7 Power with Alexa, and this is the Power Smackdown. But thanks for watching, make sure to check out the links in the video description for the latest pricing of these two devices, and I will see you in the next video.